YouTube universe. Welcome to beautiful, hot, and humid San Antonio, Texas, where the temperatures have been up to a 107, even 110 heat index, and the Saharan dust has moved in to make for a beautiful outdoor experience. Today, we're taking a look at what may be the most impressive e-bike that I've reviewed to date, the Yurtopia Carbon Fiber e-bike. Yes, carbon fiber, so it only weighs 30 pounds, which unlike these temperatures is a breath of fresh air considering I've been reviewing e-bikes that weigh up to 80 pounds and having to haul around my 50 pound bike rack. None of that with the Yurtopia 30 pound carbon fiber bike. One of these bikes will set you back about $2,799, unless of course your Topia is having a special and you might be able to get it a little bit cheaper than that. Now, if you decide to purchase one of these bad boys, I'd really appreciate it if you use the link in the description, which really helps to support the channel. The entire bike has a futuristic vibe kind of going on. And because it's all carbon fiber, it's literally one piece. You won't find a single weld point. The only place where it's not one solid piece is at the handlebar and the front fork so that you're able to turn. Uh, but again, just a futuristic vibe. Now I have a medium which can support up to 240 pounds. Not sure about the weight limit of the large. And they do come in three different colors. Sirius, Lyra, and Midnight in Paris. In the center of the handlebar, we have the LED dot matrix smart bar display, which is powered on by pressing the thumbprint sensor on the right. That's right, this bike has a thumbprint sensor, so it'll only unlock once you've set your thumbprint. It's got haptic feedback, so you'll feel the vibration when giving commands. And oh yeah, did I mention it's voice activated? Light on. Light on. Light off. Light off. Volume two. Volume two. Volume four. Volume four. It's also got GPS tracking in case the bike is stolen. It can connect to your iOS or Android device via Bluetooth where you can access the Yurtopia app and view things like the current temperature, recent ride data, see your Topia news and story feeds, access a quick assemble guide, pull up your GPS, and a really cool dashboard feature so you can mount your phone to your bike and see your current speed, ride time, trip distance, and so on. And you can track past routes and ride reports. You'll initially pair your bike in settings under my device and can update your firmware as well as reset your password here. The Utopia gets bonus points here as the front headlight and brake light are super bright and it comes equipped with Aries advanced rear early indication system which will alert drivers behind you by lighting up the brake light as well as let you know when someone is approaching by announcing pay attention to the behind. And two turn signals that project onto the ground are a nice add-on as well. One of the highlights of this bike that separates it from the pack is the Gates carbon drive belt instead of a chain, which means no oil, no mess, and Utopia claims this belt should last you up to around 18,000 miles, which is an insane amount of mileage. We have a 250 watt rear hub motor, which gives an advertised top speed of 20 miles per hour and is combined with a torque sensor, meaning that the bike will adjust the assist by how much power you're putting into your pedals, which should lead to a smoother experience over cadence based sensors. This is matched up with five speed modes, pedal mode, which is no assist, eco mode, which is some assist, comfort or mode two, sport or mode three, and your top mode labeled as T or turbo. Now I've been paying attention to comment sections and feedback when it comes to this bike and the one big thing that I see stick out is a lot of you guys are concerned with the 250 watt hub motor and how well it'll handle hills. Well if you can see in the distance behind me there's quite a steep hill coming up so rest assured I'm going to test it. It's got 160 millimeter dual hydraulic disc brakes, Kenda Quest puncture resistant tires, which are definitely made for those looking for a road bike. So I wouldn't recommend this or take this off road. And finally, a removable 36 volt 10 amp hour battery, which Utopia claims will get you between a 30 and 80 mile range based off of what mode you're in. Let's get it on the road and test those hills and see just how it does. I'm definitely having to work on mode one. It's giving me a little assistance. Let's get around this corner 
and then maybe we can bump it up to mode two. <sighs> All right, so mode two is definitely better. <sighs> I feel like I can breathe now because uh, that beginning part was a little rough. So mode two so far is good. We'll see if I have any trouble. Definitely still have to use some leg work here, but not too much. So I think if you're looking for an exercise bike, we still gotta put some leg work into it. And this is a good bike. Okay, let's go to three. And it's not too much of a difference to be honest it's not like a 750 watt bike that's going to give you this massive boost whenever you go up a pedal assist mode all right this is a pretty steep part of the trail and on mode three it's doing okay definitely got to use a little leg work but it's definitely doable we're almost to a straightaway here so at the uh straightaway Put it on turbo and test the top speed. All right, we're now in turbo mode. All right, let's see. Let's try it now. And that's probably going to be about as fast as I'm going to get just because it's pretty bumpy, <laughs> pretty windy, but I believe the advertised is 20 miles per hour. Overall, definitely a change of pace from the 80 pound bikes that I'm used to. Just kind of cruising it on mode one now, tiny bit of assistance, almost at the turnaround point. So the way back's going to be a lot easier. Obviously, I'm not going to be going uphill as much be going down those slopes that I came up initially testing the different modes but I did just fine zero was definitely a struggle you didn't quite catch that in the camera one was okay still a struggle two was better and three definitely handled the hills so I think unless you're dealing with cliffs then you should be okay gonna switch to mode two now because we got a hill incline coming up and really it's no problem at all I mean, like I said, unless you're riding cliffs and you're dealing with really steep hills, I think you're going to be just fine. I mean, I'm on mode two right now going up this hill. It's probably about, mm, I don't know, maybe 15 degrees, 20. And on mode two, I'm fine. Still got three in turbo, so I think you're going to be just fine, honestly. All right, we're going to hit uphill again before we get to the swirls and turns that I initially tested the modes with and I feel like mode 2 will probably be a good mode just to ride back to the start line or well, in this case will be the finish line pretty comfortable mode speed to be in I think that's going to be it for my dialogue guys I mean honestly what do I think of this bike you know I'm not used to the bumps of the bike just because I've been you know reviewing fat tire bikes which handle the bumps a bit better. However, the trade-off is those way up to 80 pounds. This is only 30, so I definitely think that if you're looking for a road bike and you're somebody who, you know, bikes long distances, you know, I, I'm in a cyclist group and they go 30 to 40 miles sometimes, I think this is gonna be a solid bike for you. If you're, maybe you're older, you have bad knees and you're just looking for a little bit of assistance to help you on those hills so it doesn't quite kill your knees or your legs as much then i would say that this is probably a perfect recommendation for you that's going to do it for today so thank you for watching until next time stay tuned and have a good day